In this video, we have a question here that says, suppose you know the height and volume of a cylinder, can you make a net for the cylinder? Now a net is just a 3D shape cut open and unfolded. Uh, so for example, if we can imagine that we took some kind of rectangular prism and, and cut it open, right, we would get these flaps. Maybe this is the center piece right here, and then maybe um, when we cut the other sides apart here, oops, it would open up and, and form a net. Maybe something like this. Right here's a simple rectangular prism that's been cut open into a net. And if you folded this thing up, it would form a 3D rectangular prism. And then I would add one more side, right, like this, so that it would actually close to form a closed box there. Maybe this would be the top and this would be the bottom. You could, or you can look at it many different ways, but that's the, that's the basic idea of a net. So the question is, can we make a net for the cylinder if we just know the height and the volume? Well, let's just think about for a moment how this might work. Well, a cylinder right, is made of a circle on the top and bottom. And in between, we measure the height. So we know the height. So let's pretend that we know the, the height is 10 feet. OK. So what would the volume of the cylinder be? Well, volume is equal to pi r squared h. And what does that mean? Well, that means that the volume of a cylinder is equal to pi times the radius squared, or times the radius times the radius, multiplied by the height. I'm going to rearrange this so it just says r times r times h times pi, just to kind of see how this formula actually works out. I haven't changed anything here, just rearranged it. So we know that our height is 10, right? And we know pi is a constant, it's always about 3.14. The only thing we were missing is the radius, right? So the radius squared, or the radius times the radius. But we know the volume now. Let's make up our volume. Let's say it's 100 cubic feet, right? So feet cubed. And over here we have 10 times pi, and in terms of feet. So we're, we're asked, can we make the net? Well, the last thing we would need is the radius square, or the radius times the radius. I'm going to write that, the radius times the radius. So if we're only missing that one variable, can we figure out what it is? The answer is yes. What I would probably do is divide both sides by 10 here, and I would get then 10 feet cubed equals the radius times the radius. And I divided by 10 here, so this 10's gone. And that's in terms of pi feet. So now what? Well, radius times radius times about 3 would give you 10 here. So that means if I want to find what the radius is, I would go backwards. Instead of multiplying the radius by pi, radius squared by pi to get 10, I would take 10, divide it by pi, and hopefully get the, the radius squared, or I would, right? So here I take 10, divide it by pi, right? And that's going to be equal to the radius, right? The radius squared, or the radius times the radius. If I want to know what the radius is, I take the square root of both sides. So the radius is always going to equal the square root of 10, right, over pi. In this case, if the volume was was 100 and the height was 10. And what that means is for any given height and for any given volume, there's a way to find the radius, right? Here we chose a random height and volume, and eventually we figured out the radius is about this number. So all this means is that, yes, you can draw a net, because once you know the height of the cylinder, you can draw the lateral surface. The lateral surface of a, of a cylinder is just a rectangle curved around. And the two ends are both circles. So we know in this case that the height is 10. Oops, the height is 10. Let's say about here, the height is 10, right? And the total volume was, I think, 100 in that case. And in order to get that volume of 100, we need the two circles here that, that'll actually fit around and fold to form this shape. Now we need the radius. So if I draw this circle right here, let's see if I can do this. It's approximation, and one over here. Oops, one over here. Okay. Now, this is a rough sketch, and the key is that that this this distance right here, right, will have to wrap around this circle right here when the cylinder is actually closed. So if I was sketching this out perfectly, that means that this yellow distance, because it has to wrap around the circle, right, like this, well, not like that, but on the outside of the circle here, where it has to actually fit on the outside of the circle, oh boy, you know, like this. That's the circumference. 
So this length has to be the circumference of the circle, and the circumference is about three times longer, or pi times longer than diameter. So you can draw the net exactly if you know what the radius is. In our case, our radius was kind of an odd number. I mean, I should have chosen something nicer there, but the radius was equal to the square root of 10 over pi, which means that you could draw this net exactly if you had to, because this distance would be about, well, that's the radius, so the diameter on both circles, of course, is the same, but the diameter is double that, and you could think of that as 2 square root of 10 over pi. That means this distance has to be 3 times that, right? It's the circumference, and circumference, if you remember, is pi times the diameter. So if this is our diameter right here. It's about 3 times longer this way. So it would be 2 times pi, or 2 pi, times the square root of 10 over pi, which doesn't seem very friendly, but the point is, and we can reduce that or simplify it, that given any height and volume, you could end up by drawing the exact net for that cylinder. So I hope this helped. Thanks.